Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a new edition of the Daily Debate. In tonight's show, we're going to be looking at the youth of Egypt and their political participation ahead of the presidential election. So we will be focusing on them tonight. But before we start doing that, let's check out a couple of the main stories making the news today. Where President Abdel Fattah Sisi met with Minister of Justice, Councillor Omar Marwan today. Presidential spokesman Ahmed Fahmi said... The meeting tackled means of developing the legislative system across governorates, developing courts, premises, and providing high-end technologies. President Sisi was also briefed on the latest developments in the Adela, or Justice City, in the new administrative capital, as well as measures taken to facilitate court steps through digitalization. In this respect, President Sisi gave his directives for the swift conclusion of the city in accordance with the scheduled deadlines. Developing the real estate registration system was also on the agenda of the meeting in addition to various state public services. And as part of an Arab Islamic Committee, Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri took part in the UN Security Council inquiry session over developments in the Middle East in New York today. The session is designed to review the Arab and Islamic stance calling for a stop to the Israeli escalation, a comprehensive ceasefire, an end to Israeli abuses and allowing aid into Gaza sustainably. The session is also to discuss activating the Middle East peace process and the re-establishment of an independent Palestinian state. These were a couple of the main stories making the news today. Now turning our attention to tonight's topic, let's check out this report regarding Egypt really preparing the youth politically to uh, positively and actively participate in the presidential election. Let's check it out and we'll be right back. As Egyptians will cast their votes in the 2024 presidential elections next month, the state has prepared its youth to actively participate in the upcoming elections, being the main cornerstone of the society and its future leaders. Youth have been participated in organizing and sharing in election campaigns and the whole electoral process. The Youth Committee of the National Dialogue urged the government to reform student union elections and expand and support for student activities at universities as part of expanding youth empowerment in the country. The last 10 years had witnessed the greatest empowerment of youth in Egypt in decades, and there was a significant increase in the representation of youth in parliament under the tenure of President Afet Hassisi. The representation of youth aged 25 to 36 youth representation in parliament increased from 8% in 2010 to 11% in 2015 and to 21% in 2021. There is a crucial significance of enhancing youth political participation throughout the electoral cycle, and there should be programming strategies for youth political participation beyond the ballot box. 
The Good Practice Guide identifies key entry points for the inclusion of young people in political and electoral processes and compiles good practice examples of mechanisms for youth political empowerment under the globe focusing on innovative instruments with the potential to provide fresh inputs for UNGP programs as well as initiatives by other stakeholders. Youth empowerment aims to improve quality of life and is being achieved through participation in youth empowerment programs. Empowerment movements including youth empowerment originate gain momentum, become viable, and become institutionalized. Youth empowerment is often addressed as a gateway to intergenerational equity, civic engagement, and democracy building. Activities may focus on youth-led media, youth rights, youth councils, youth activism, youth involvement in community decision making. There are six types or dimensions of youth empowerment, namely psychological, community, organizational, economic, social, and cultural. Psychological empowerment enhances individuals' conscious belief in self-efficacy, awareness, and knowledge of problems and solutions, and of how individuals can address problems that harm their quality of life. This dimension aims to create self-confidence and give youth the skills to acquire knowledge. Community empowerment focuses on enhancing their community through leadership development, improving communication, and creating network of support to mobilize the community to address concerns. Organizational empowerment aims to create a base of resources for a community, including voluntary organizations, unions, and associations that aim to protect, promote, and advocate for the powerless. Economic empowerment teaches entrepreneurial skills, how to take ownership of their assets and how to have income security. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're joined here tonight in the studio by Dr. Mohammed Khalil, the educational consultant and teacher trainer. Dr. Khalil, thank you very much for joining thank us you. this evening. Dr. Khalil, if we're talking tonight about the youth and their participation in the political uh, process and the presidential elections, let's start before talking about the presidential elections, let's talk about the political awareness in general for the youth. Now, we started during 2011, during the revolution, everybody sort of took a crash course in politics and everybody started becoming politically aware. And but that was 2011, that was many years ago. So since then, the youth have been participating and actively participating yes. within the political life, having more uh, numbers and percentages within the parliament. And it really started off with the students' participation uh, and being politically vocal at the universities and high schools with, within different demonstrations regarding different yes, uh, political causes. And we've seen quite recently the, the political demonstrations, for instance, uh, regarding the Gaza uh, conflict. So, and you're very much involved within the educational yes, process. So how do you feel students now, the youth, even before they graduated, how actively and politically aware are they and really being keen on having a say in the world of politics? Thank you very much for this question. I'd like just to commence and start my word by paying condolences to all the families of Gaza, to all the victims of Gaza, all Egyptians, all Arabs really do feel about w the catastrophe happening over there. So yes. I'd like to start first to uh, pray God to give them all mercy and patience in their ordeal and catastrophe, of course. Yes, definitely. And uh, as you know, I've been working in the field of uh, education for 25 years. And uh, I've always believed that youth bring about all the power and the changes. So when we say the wind of change, mm -hmm. usually this happens through uh, young people, youth. So, um, and that's why, for historically speaking, if you go back in history, in 1960s, you'll find that mm -hmm. all the movements in America and Europe started with the youth. Mm -hmm. the, even uh, the Black American movement started with youth. 
So young people are usually kind of rebellious and they've got the political awareness. The good thing is that this kind of awareness, we saw all that in 2011 with the revolution, mm -hmm. how Tahrir Square was quite populated by young men and women, uh, hand in hand calling for freedom uh, and equality. Uh, now, um, within, of course, these days with the catastrophe of Gaza, I want to tell you that campuses in both private and public universities, campuses were really kind of swarmed and populated with all youth demonstrating, mm -hmm. demonstrating for Palestine, demonstrating uh, against aggression, um, against children. So, mm -hmm. once again, um, political awareness is something that has always been very exclusive and unique to the young people, especially if they're well educated. Mm -hmm. And, um, okay, being a teacher trainer, I want to tell you that uh, education comes first from not just the family, but from well-trained educators. Yes. And that's why I said before we went live, I told you that professional development is the key of change. Everything starts with professional development mm -hmm. of educators. Educators have got the power to spread awareness and from that youth start to change. So if we go back to your question regarding uh, the, the, what's happening now in the political arena, we can say that yes, young Egyptians uh, are becoming more politically aware thanks to social media, thanks to technology, artificial intelligence, with all the flip side of all uh, those yes. applications. But still, mm -hmm. uh, youth are kind of now, they have an open window to what's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's why I call globalization. Globalization is, is, it does not only mean that we've become a small village, it means that you've become exposed to diverse cultures, mm -hmm. different cultures from across the world. So youth now underst fully understand the meaning of human rights. Mm -hmm. Okay, if they called human rights in the past out of the innate uh, feelings, yes. now they're becoming more aware mm -hmm. of human rights in terms of what's happening in Gaza, what's happening in the Arab world, what's happening in Europe, what's happening across the world. Mm -hmm. So once again, yes, what we witnessed in the couple in the last couple of months with all the demonstrations showed a kind of maturity going back to egypt once again of course the youth uh, f forum and uh, i think there were uh, so many events for you yes kind of uh, a micro parliament held by youth a mm -hmm. micro um, security council yes. yeah, yeah. all this actually empowered young men and women mm -hmm. at the end of the day i don't want just to give the bright side of everything mm -hmm. of course you know me quite well yes i've got this kind of controversial i've got this kind of critical thinking that when everything has its pros and cons mm -hmm. so on the flip side of that we really need youth to be more involved in the educational enrichment professional development because the more they develop the more they will see the truth Truth comes with knowledge, and knowledge comes with um, being more aware, not just politically, socially, mm -hmm. culturally. Yes. And of course, you know, everything is interrelated. We have now something called the interdisciplinary approach. Mm -hmm. we, don't suggest, we don't just study education. Education affects society. Education affects politics. Education affects uh, economy. Mm -hmm. So everything is interrelated. So if we're talking about politics, mm -hmm. yes, youth have to read more, Reading comes from knowledge, changing the culture of the family, mm -hmm. changing the culture of parents. Some of the parents are simply exam-oriented, grade-oriented. Now we need to read because read will bring about knowledge. Mm -hmm. Knowledge will bring change politically, socially, economically. Mm -hmm. And of course, no one can turn a blind eye to the economic situation in our country and across the world. Yes. Well, how then can we actually translate or transform this, the, the youth's enthusiasm, political enthusiasm, taking it from just uh, demonstrating or being vocal about their political stance into the professional development, actually seeking to enrich their own knowledge about the political spectrum. So it's not just naive enthusiasm, but really trying to educate themselves, trying to seek sort of uh, progress professional progress in terms of 
politics, educating themselves. Uh, read, I mean, as you've mentioned, you've alluded to a lot of the conferences, the youth conferences that really started in 2016 and then turned into a World Youth uh, Forum actually as well in 2017. And it was about the youth really trying to have an impact. Now, the official figures, the, uh, the one that we can easily look at is the youth's participation within the parliament it was 8%. I mean, uh, talking about 25 to 36 years old, 8% in 20, uh, 2010, 11% by 2015, now it's 21%. So this progression, do you feel that youth are actually really participating, actively participating within the political life, t taking roles and positions within political parties, diplomatic fields, having a say in the parliament? No, honestly not. Mm -hmm. They're not taking enough participation uh, in the political scene. Honestly speaking, I believe that youth nowadays have got more knowledge than many different, many generations before. Mm -hmm. Previous generations had less ambitions, they were less exposed to other cultures. Now, uh, I, I actually, you know, I'm a person who does not glorify the past all the time. I always believe that every generation has, you know, its fortunes and misfortunes mm -hmm. so the whole situation now i think that youth need to be more involved mm -hmm. more empowered and by the way when we talk about empowerment of youth we're not talking only about the parliament mm -hmm. we're talking about the media as well yes because through media channels they can actually interview youth there should be kind of uh, channels for youth to voice their concerns mm -hmm. because if, if young people do not voice their concerns the final outcome will be kind of depression maybe frustration mm -hmm. and this will this will actually have a negative impact on all aspects of life so young people should have different channels to voice their concerns their dreams and, and their ambitions another thing not uh, youth do not have to be just participating in the parliament you could actually voice their ambitions and express themselves through art, mm -hmm. through uh, plays, uh, m m movies, uh, stages, uh, theatres, uh, drawing. Mm -hmm. I just, uh, you know, I just, I've just now remembered that a couple of weeks ago, my students were actually presenting. They have their own final end of semester presentations mm -hmm. and some of them tackled political issues and how they expressed themselves through drawing, through the social media, through videos, through art, through plays and acting, the government, people, society and the culture should highlight and shed light on mm -hmm. uh, what youth are doing actually in different forms. So once again, yes, there should be, we should I involve young people more in the political arena, in the political scene. Uh, one last thing political parties mm -hmm. yes. should, political parties all across Egypt should call for young people to, you, you, they don't, okay, young people don't have to be members of the political party to be able to meet uh, the top shots or the big shots of the party. Simply, mm -hmm. they could, there could be something like monthly meetings with every neighborhood, with mm -hmm. the political party, with, and young people just go approach whoever is there in the meeting and those representatives of the party uh, simply to go and bring all those concerns, all the voices of young people to the parliament, to whoever may be concerned, to ministries, because at the end of the day, this will lead to the integrity and in the inclusion, the inclusion mm -hmm. of young people. And young people will feel more like have become an integral part of this society and culture. And um, I know, shockingly, that we've got a huge percentage of young people who are planning to immigrate. So mm -hmm. I'm sorry to tell you this, that some, some young people, when you tell them, what's your dream? My dream is simply to travel, mm -hmm. to travel for work, for academic purposes, to travel for immigration. And that's what we call brain drain, of course, you know, mm, this yes. phenomenon of brain drain. When we studied academically the the reason for this uh, trend of brain drain and traveling, it's mainly different forms of frustration. Mm -hmm. Part of the frustration is that young people, their voices are unheard. Mm -hmm. So the unheard voices yes. are suppressed. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Although I know that the government, I know that many are trying to approach young people, but still there should be channels, mm -hmm. social media, TV channels, radio, um, as I said, political parties, young people need to be heard, to be able to be productive mm -hmm. within all the, yes. you know, the crisis that's happening across the world. Yes. Well, if you're talking about channels and ha being heard, now, social media, as you've mentioned, is a, a great medium for, uh, for the youth yes. to, to actually voice their opinions and concerns. And maybe, do you feel that social media and the use of technology in general, it would be the main medium for the youth's participation, or at least a good starting point for the youth's participation, especially that the youth are probably more technology suave than, yeah. than a lot of the adults? Yeah, yeah, youth nowadays have become more tech savvy mm -hmm. than, uh, you know, uh, older generations. But the main thing is that it's not simply about social media. It's, a, it's about that videos reach out to officials. Mm -hmm. So maybe you find young people every day going live, sharing videos on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. And at the end of the day, nobody's listening to them. Mm -hmm. And this will add to the frustration. So. What's, what, what should happen is something like more uh, organized channels, like uh, some, one of the officials saying that, okay, we'll go live, you can post your questions, we can interact, mm -hmm. no problem, we can go uh, on uh, Zoom or any kind of platform that we can interact. Young people need to be heard. It's not simply that I go live or I post videos. Mm -hmm. They have to make sure that someone is listening to them because after three or four months of going live and, be, and videos, they'll feel more frustrated. Mm -hmm. Nobody is paying them attention. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, social media, technology, and of course, you have to know that this is now the language of the, the modern era, technology. Everybody's talking about technology yes. and artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Well, do you feel that, okay, if you're, if you're going to take this into the the presidential elections. So how can we actually make sure that the youth realize the, the responsibility, their rights, the, the, they need to exercise uh, these things in order to participate within the presidential elections, just really have a say in how the political life is going, having, having a voice within the whole political spectrum. How, what can we actually do to encourage the youth? Because it's an ongoing process. You can't just, the youth of today are quite different from the youth of 10 years ago. So Every generation is yeah. different, by the way. Mm -hmm. And I think that what happens is that with the progress of time, it's natural to have generations who are born for this age. Mm -hmm. Every generation has been born for a certain age with all its challenges. So. I think that with the presidential elections coming soon, it's very important for the official page of, the, of every candidate mm -hmm. or runner-up. Runner they should have something like a medium, a social medium or kind of a platform that young people can write like comments, queries, questions, their ambitions. Mm -hmm. And uh, the candidate should f uh, post a video of his plans and simply young, and he should, or that person should have a kind of a team mm -hmm. backing him up to answer the queries of young people. I'm not asking for that person to, be, to do everything on his own, but simply to answer the questions and queries and maybe mm -hmm. the frustrations of young people. Mm -hmm. And if we look at, look at the, the, of course, uh, back in history, uh, pre, uh, the, the former US president, President uh, uh, Barack Obama, mm -hmm. He resorted to social media a lot to interact with young people. And I think that was one reason why he, I think, won the presidential election for two terms in a row. So he was able, right? Mm -hmm. He was able yes. to approach young people a different, with a wide spectrum of uh, the society. So why not to have something like this? Every candidate has got his own uh, official page and they simply interact with him. He can simply go live. Because after all, not everybody is, has got the luxury of going to political parties mm -hmm. and meeting the representative of every candidate. Mm -hmm.
or discussing the program of the presidential elections. Not everybody has got that. Some young people are very busy with their exams coming up. And don't forget that the presidential elections are taking place you know, very, uh, very soon. Yes. And we've mm -hmm. got the exams, mm -hmm. the end of semester and the end of term exams coming up. So if we are trying to listen to uh, young people, we should simply do that through the channels that they prefer. Mm -hmm. namely social media, websites, maybe telegrams, you know, WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. Yes, why not to have something like new different ways that every candidate can publicize about his program and plans through uh, different channels. Yes. Well, do you feel that, I mean, definitely decades ago, for decades, the, the youth or many citizens believe that their participation in the political life or voting or elections is, is really marginalized and it's not really important, it's not really going to make a huge difference. Do you feel that that has changed now? Do you feel that the political enthusiasm for the youth or their eagerness to participate within the political life is only attached to certain political events or crises that are taking place around the world, but generally they're not that keen on participating within the normal uh, sort of schedules or tables or life of uh, the political life here in Egypt. Do you feel that they are aware or is it only attached and connected to certain events and crises? So once again, mm -hmm. um, if we look at the status quo, the political status quo now in Egypt, we'll find that yes, many young people are being marginalized. Mm -hmm. So some of them just feel that what's the use of going and voting if my voice doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. However, when it comes to crisis, this shows that young people have, are ready to participate mm -hmm. if they are respected. Mm -hmm. The major problem that we've been facing is that the older generations have always believed that young people lack experience. And that's why they don't pro pay them a lot of attention mm -hmm. you know this has always to me have been this has always been a myth mm -hmm. young people have got less experience but they've got the energy of mm -hmm. change they've got the the power mm -hmm. to to turn words and intentions into actions mm -hmm. and that's why in 2011 Tahrir Square was all about young people mm -hmm. if they feel there is a cause and they're passionate about it, you'll find the wind of change happening. Mm -hmm. So it's all about giving them respect and respecting their mentality and telling them, giving them a deal. These generations are so practical. They're not romantic. Yes. You, you're not going to tell them you have to participate in politics for the sake of politics. Mm -hmm. No. You have to tell them you're going to participate in politics for the sake of change, and mm -hmm. if you participate, you will get one, two, three. Mm -hmm. The current generations are very much kind of practical, and uh, they, they know, they, they are kind of target-oriented. Tell me, tell me the deal. I'm ready to participate, but are you going to provide me with a bigger percentage in the parliament? Maybe, do you think there will be young representatives mm -hmm. among all ministries, political parties? Mm -hmm. Is it simply a kind of a game to participate and then I'm out? Or you have, you know, I think the officials have to give a kind of a, a, a number of suggestions and proposals mm -hmm. to young people to be able to appeal to their enthusiasm once again. Well, the government has, done, I mean, there's a, a, a national youth committee within the national dialogue. There's uh, the, the youth within the political parties yes. as well. There's also the, the national youth conferences, international youth forums, uh, presidential leadership programs. So the government has been working since 2016, it was high on the agenda yes, of President right. Sisi's uh, program, really working on implementing and uh, empowering and incorporating the, the youth's role within the political life. What more can be done by the government, at least? What, I mean, it's, it's as you've mentioned, the, this generation is different from the previous one. Of course, yes. So, 
what can be done more to encourage the youth to actively participate within the political world? Maybe you'll be surprised with my answer, but I think that the first thing to provide them is to provide them with proper education. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because if you want to empower youth, yes. we have to be very, we have to define, uh, are we talking about all youth? Yes, definitely yes, but at the same time, we're targeting well-educated youth. Mm -hmm. If you want the best thing for this country, if we're talking about investing in the future of Egypt, we have to invest in the education of mm -hmm. young people. Yes. Youth, I'm talking about children who will be future, the future generations. Mm -hmm. Children from kindergarten, from KG1 to grade 12 university, if we provide them with quality education based on critical thinking, mm -hmm. based on negotiation, then we're actually preparing and we are grooming generations mm -hmm. for democracy, mm -hmm. for uh, more participation in politics. Because, uh, by the way, maybe you go down in the street now, approach a young man and tell him about anything political and the young man does not have any knowledge about politics because he was not provided with the proper education. Mm -hmm. So the key to change in all fields, including politics, is education. Yes. If you want to improve education, you have to provide professional development to teachers, curriculum, develop curriculum that's based on negotiation, problem solving. Mm -hmm. We don't want young people to be simply frustrated with every crisis. We need them to prepare young people who can come up with a solution whenever there's a problem because after all life is full of, full of ups and downs. So how to prepare that? How to prepare a young man who's, always, who's almost 23, 24, 25 years, a university graduate, you have to start from KG1 mm -hmm. with education. If young people get this access to the international politics to uh, world knowledge with competition related, uh, to related to education. With all due respect to celebrities, with mm -hmm. all due respect to art, movies, there should be something else. There should be something else apart from movies and songs. Mm -hmm. Young people should pay more attention to their education. And by the way, if I talk about the feeling of frustration among some young people, it's because of what? Mm -hmm. Simply because I'm a young man, I'm a young man, and I want to start from zero to hero. I want to start my family life. But the problem is that international companies cannot recruit me because I'm not eligible enough academically. So I'm frustrated. What are you talking about? Politics is a luxury. Mm -hmm. So if we have now some young people who believe that politics is a luxury or participating in the in the elections mm -hmm. it's simply a luxury i need to work and to be able to work i've got to get to take english courses which i cannot afford i have mm -hmm. to take uh, courses in artificial intelligence software and i cannot afford so once again education will lead to prosperity mm -hmm. a generation uh, of young people who are more kind of knowledgeable about the world crisis, the issues, mm -hmm. they've taken that, problem solving skills, critical thinking skills, negotiation skills. Now we have a future generation who are ready to participate in the political arena. I know that we're talking about something maybe in 10, 20 years, mm -hmm. but why not start now? Yes, definitely. And once again, I, I told you that with the artificial intelligence future generations will be in danger mm -hmm. because of course the world the future you know you never know what the future is uh, hiding for us maybe robots will taking over many jobs maybe you will have robot teachers you will mm -hmm. have robot TV presenters mm -hmm. robots will be yes. around the world so at the end of the day you've got to prepare them for the economic challenges for the political challenges mm -hmm. for the artificial intelligence which is actually changing the whole world professional development is the key mm -hmm. education and development is the key if we've got good education you'll have uh, political awareness will have an improve, improvement in the level of health mm -hmm. economy 
and all levels, of course. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, definitely Egypt has been working on empowering the youth, really uh, getting them involved, more involved within the political life since 2016. Let's check out this report and we'll be right back. Egypt has significantly empowered youths on all fronts in society since 2016. The political leadership has focused on the empowerment of young people and work on continuous communication between the state and youth. President Afatah Sisi declared 2016 the year of Egyptian youths to be the beginning of the presidential program to qualify young people for leadership. These events attracted the attention of the digital media and discussions dominated the political and social participation of youth and their role in sustainable development plans represented in Egypt's Vision 2030. This study discussed the role of digital media in supporting political and economic empowerment of youths and aimed to determine the degree of their awareness of empowerment mechanisms, strategies, and various dimensions. Facebook came at the forefront of the social networks that respondents always rely on for information about youth empowerment. There is a strong knowledge of the youth empowerment strategies accomplished by the government. There is also a number of alternatives to address the problem of weak political empowerment of youth using technology that has an impact on youth in order to achieve the goal of political empowerment of youths announced by the political leadership and the Egyptian government and programs have been developed to achieve it. The first alternative, organizing national campaign to support young people to run in local and parliamentary elections. The second alternative, organizing a program to prepare executive leaders at local and central levels. The third alternative, the use of technology to stimulate party life in Egypt and activate the role of youth in partisan work. In light of the constitution's stipulation that there is a 25 representation of young people in local people's councils and in light of the eminent issuance of the localities law, the parliamentary elections law and the subsequent holding of local and parliamentary elections, it is important to organize a national campaign to support young people to run for elections where part of the campaign is organized using social media and another part is through organizing training courses for young people. And then this alternative aims to provide services to young people that help achieve the goal of political empowerment of them. The first alternative aims to familiarize young people with new electoral laws, training young people wishing to stand in local or parliamentary elections on how to campaign. Familiarize young people with the functions of parliament and local people's councils, lectures at designated venues or via the internet to raise awareness of current laws through experts and specialized professors use experts and professors specializing in giving lectures directly or online to explain laws and raise young people's awareness. This alternative allows access to large numbers of young people whether wishing to participate in political life who need to refine their skills in this area to try to convince them of the importance of political and community participation in general and the role of such participation in the country's overall development. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, continuing our discussion with uh, Dr. Khalil. Now, sir, like, the presidential elections are starting uh, next month, within a few days, actually. And it's taking place here in Egypt and abroad as well. So my question is, the government has been working very hard to really encourage and incorporate the youth in, within the political life and the political participation here in Egypt. But what about our youth abroad, our expats? Because a lot of the youth... Some of them were born abroad. Some of them uh, actually moved when they were toddlers, really. Yeah. And they don't necessarily have the same sort of sense, uh, cultural sense of patriotism and nationalism. And they're probably also confused about which country do they belong to. Is it their country of origin or their parents' origin or the country that they're currently 
reside in or live in. So what can be done to try and reach out and educate the, the youth living abroad into wanting to have a voice or feeling that they can have some sort of an impact or a change on their country of origin, Egypt? Uh, of course, uh, Mr. Hani, of course, you know that I come from a background of literature and humanities, mm -hmm. English language and literature. So we've always been studying something called the problem of cultural identity and how some uh, Lebanese Americans, Arab Americans have, got, have always been suffering from this kind of conflict mm -hmm. between being an Arab or American or Arab and, and European. Mm -hmm. This actually applies to uh, Egyptian expats as well. And of course, if we talk about Egyptian expats, we don't have to talk about people who were born there, mm -hmm. maybe people working there as well. And this actually is quite complicated because we've got millions of Egyptians living in the Gulf, in the mm -hmm. GCC. So Egyptians living in the Gulf, they have to feel prior to the presidential elections, the whole procedures required, mm -hmm. the timing of, uh, you know, uh, going for voting, they've got to be aware of all the steps, that's number one. So people working there, they've got very busy schedules, as you know. Yes. So the embassies and the consulates have to send out emails and messages, maybe on the Egyptian TV, about when and where to go and cast your vote. This is something very important. However, if we talk about the cultural identity crisis, mm -hmm of the, the first generation. I'm not mm -hmm. going to talk about the second generation of Egyptians. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the first generation of Egyptians who were born abroad or mm -hmm. they, start, they went there when they were children. This is a huge problem. But surprisingly, when I traveled abroad, I found that most of the Egyptians are so much attached to their culture. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying surprisingly because other Arab nationalities are not like that. Some other nationalities, without their naming them, they simply are culturally detached mm -hmm. from the origins. But when we talk about the Egyptian expats, many of them, most of them, are still attached to Egypt. Mm -hmm. Some of the children, they still can recall and have uh, nostalgic feelings about Egypt, even if they've never been to, uh, to Egypt. So mm -hmm. the, I think that political awareness, it starts by uh, the cultural awareness through consulates and embassies. Mm -hmm. How the cultural attaches over there in the Egyptian consulates, they hold events, they hold kind of meetings with the Egyptians abroad and how the children can get in touch with the culture of Egypt. And once again, this is the role of diplomacy, of course. Yes. Because if there is this cultural attachment, the end result is participating in the elections. Mm -hmm. And once again, people outside uh, in Europe or America are more politically aware since they live in a country where maybe there could be more awareness Mm -hmm. of the importance of democracy. So we have generations outside who are totally different from the previous generations, who are more politically aware, who know and appreciate the meaning of democracy and understand the essence of democracy. The essence of democracy is respecting my voice. Mm -hmm. So people, or children, or the generations of Egyptians who are, live in Europe or America, Definitely, they have to be approached through uh, the consulates. They have to know more about the Egyptian culture. This should be something like expos or museums, kind of mini museums, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, you know handouts, uh, giveaways mm -hmm. to those children and the kids and the young people, telling them come and spend one day in Egypt. And we have ideas like that. Mm -hmm. So these creative ideas will involve young people and, by the way, will involve non-Egyptians as well, yes. which will reflect upon tourism, mm -hmm. because we can have something like a, a simulation or a mock of the pyramids, of some kind of folklore dancing, of the culture, of the Arab culture, of the Islamic culture, of the Coptic culture, mm -hmm. pictures, presentations. Every month there is one day at, at the weekend for yes. young expats to know more at the very end, eventually, eventually, 
when they get a message, come over and participate in the elections. They will do care because they've always been attached to the roots and mm -hmm. they've always been hurt. Mm -hmm. That's it. And it's not, it's not only a month or two prior to a presidential election or parliamentary election. It's or quite complicated. It, it, it needs to be all year round. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, once again, um, you know, I traveled to many other countries and I saw uh, the cultural attaches of other countries who have been so active with, uh, you know, with uh, the communities, communities living abroad and how they are very keen on reminding people abroad of their roots and origins. Mm -hmm. It's not a big problem. It may be, it's not a big deal that a young man can have two or three nationalities but if you are originally Egyptian, it's very important to remind you of your roots. Mm -hmm. And psychologically speaking, you know, that everybody sometimes yearns and feels that he would like to go back to the past. Mm -hmm. And we've got a huge yes. ironic civilization. Why not to give it its full view to the young generations living abroad? Mm -hmm. Because cultural awareness, good education will lead to political awareness. It all starts with the power of education. Yes. Well, one final question, uh, Dr. Khalil. Now, we've talked about how we can encourage the youth and um, to, to actively participate within the political life and the elections. But what would you say, I mean, if the big movement in favor of the youth started in 2016, what would you say have been the biggest obstacles or challenges the youth are facing in terms of actually realizing their dreams or aspirations or exercising their rights and their uh, and really getting their voice and opinions across what do you feel are the main sort of challenges i mean you've alluded to maybe the 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 end of the semester exams <laughs> that are, that are that will be taking place quite soon so what big challenges and obstacles need to be overcome to re-empower and revitalize the youth's role within the political life. Okay, once again, we don't want young people to feel that their participation is optional or it's simply a luxury. Mm -hmm. If you want to encourage young people, you have to provide them with the means and you have to provide them with uh, you know, with the passion, to trigger the passion once again, inspire them once again. And I'm sorry to tell you that a young man won't ever go to any, to do any extra task if he's jobless. Mm -hmm. So once again, economic security, uh, providing them with all the means to secure a job, to have, the, to settle on a career that meets their expectations, providing them with good education, providing them with training to prepare them for the local and international markets. And I'm really sorry if I digress and I, if I go off track now and I tell you that young people now have a huge opportunity of working with multinational companies from home. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you know, with yes. the devaluation of the pound, many American, European corporations and international companies are targeting uh, talented and promising Egyptians. Mm -hmm. But once again, we're talking about promising, talented Egyptians who had, the, uh, who had good education, good background, who have got enough time to go and participate in politics. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about securing the opportunity for them political, uh, in the political scene, this means that we have to tell them there is hope. Hope comes from mm -hmm. work, employment, mm -hmm. working on their knowledge, working on their education, working on their ambitions. Young people, at the end of the day, they want to work, have a family, and secure their future. And that's why they want to travel. If they have everything at home, they will do everything for their home. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as Dr. Khalil has mentioned, it should be a necessity, not a luxury, really participating within the political life and 
whatever elections, I mean, the presidential elections are coming up, but really actively participating within the political life needs to be a necessity. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this edition of the Daily Debate. But before we go, I'd like to thank my distinguished guest, Dr. Mohammed Khalil, the educational consultant and teacher trainer. Dr. Khalil, always a pleasure having you, you with us on the show. Same here. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned for more coming up on Nile International. I'm Haini Saif. Thank you for joining us.